before my laptop decided to rudely crash in that sense there uh, and as super anti-spyware loads up on screen what I was stating was growing up in, co in, in college around my time uh, back in 2001 to 2005 uh, the biggest thing that Michael Moore came out with was Bowling for Columbine and I was actually required during my liberal stint I was actually required to watch it and it really 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 made me laugh at how basically Moore was trying to play on the emotions with Charlton Heston and Charlton Heston was basically dealing with his bouts of Alzheimer's and everything at the time and uh, Moore was trying to butter him up and just say like oh you know I've got an NRA you know I've got a membership to the NRA and everything of that nature and you know and I'm just sitting there and uh, while I'm talking and stuff, I'm just going to check out my mic settings and just make sure they're okay there. Oh, good. It's still saved to that, at least. But uh, basically, you know, Heston walked off on him. And the reason why he did was he was just fed up with the bullshit that he was trying to feed. Because he knew that indirectly he was trying... And this is a fascination that liberals have. They blame the NRA. And they say the NRA has blood on their hands. They still do it today. But... The NRA makes no government mandates or decisions whatsoever. So everybody, I mean, I even, I've even talked to people, you know, I've even talked to clients who have even said that too. And I sit there and I'm like, so the NRA is, it has, you're, so you're trying to say the NRA has pull in the government and everything like that. They, they make no, absolutely no government decisions or policies on any types of gun control or anything of that nature. Now, the NRA are a bunch of fucking idiots and everything. They're secretly, you know, Second Amendment infringers. And here's Mr. Hypocrisy here. I am a member of the NRA, but uh, that was before I started looking into them deeper. I'm not going to renew my, my membership. But uh, these people do promote gun safety. It's just, unfortunately, they don't mind doing, like, certain infringements upon it. But they don't make any any call or say or anything like that in terms of, you know, what's applicable or what's not with guns. And what were you going to say, Boku? <laughs> oh, well, not only, not only that, yeah, sorry for almost interrupting you there, Gray Fox. You're but, fine, uh, you're fine. I remember <laughs> watching that stupid movie, too, and, like, uh... Michael Moore saying that the shooting and the atrocity happened because, you know, like, that Colorado factory had something to do with them, um, you know, sending the missiles over to the bombing in Kuwait, and I sat there and like, so that's why those two did this, because of the bombing in Kuwait? <laughs> <laughs> they have, Sorry, I was doing stifled after their folks. They've got, there. yeah, they've got their problems and everything. I mean, those two kids had problems. That was just the, bat, the bottom line thing. They were pretty chill. I mean, I saw a video of basically Dylan hanging out with friends and stuff, and he seemed pretty chill and whatnot, but, uh, you know, both of them, I mean, both of them had problems, and I was a sophomore in high school in Colorado at the time, and when I was getting onto my bus to head home and stuff, yeah, 16-year-old still riding a bus, sadly, uh, the um, driver was basically listening to it on the radio and they were talking about that there were shootings there. Uh, Trey Parker and uh, Matt Stone are Columbine students too, you know. Oh, I well, didn't know that. Well, it was in the Bowling for Columbine movie, you know. Ooh. But uh, no, don't worry about it. But uh, it's just so funny how, how Moore gets all of these, like, these figureheads together that are basically not political experts, but just more so. I mean, and I mean, it's okay if you want to get opinions from people who are like, who. I mean, it's okay to get opinions and people for documentaries who aren't who aren't in the political stage or anything. But I always love how Moore goes after people who basically are celebrities and whatnot. Like he had Marilyn Manson, and then he also had uh, you know Matt Stone and Trey Parker and things of that nature there. But I loved how Matt and Trey spoke more so about how they handled things, you know, when it came to their growing up as opposed to, you know, trying to make political statements about it and everything, which was good. Marilyn Manson, you know, they were trying to, like, they basically, he basically brought Marilyn Manson on because a lot of the, and we'll call them boomer, you know, boomer Republicans of the time were basically trying to blame video games or Marilyn Manson or things like that. I've been playing video games since I was five years old, and I'm, you know, I'm 37 today, and I don't, 
I don't have violent tendencies. I mean, I love guns, but I mean, I'm not going to turn them on innocent living creatures, animal or human or anything of that nature. But I don't have violent tendencies. Video games are a great way to see expression of story. Well, they used to be, but, <laughs> but in certain some some still are. I mean, Japan at least gets it. But video games are a great great way to test reflexes, to have fun, you know, with uh, doing certain things on screen, uh, to basically do certain things that you wouldn't do in reality. I'm looking at you, Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> And uh, oh, just yeah. basically, you know, live a fantasy. Plus, I mean, it caters to sports too. I love, I love the I, when they had them. I love the college football, and basketball games. Boku gets into the wrestling a lot and everything. Yeah. And it's just a great way to create your own story within a story. So that's the right way to do it. Plus, if you have the parents that raise you well enough, you know, to know the difference between fantasy and reality, that's crucial too. Well, you know, and, and that's the funny thing that you bring bring that up because it ties into once again what how we started off this whole thing it's like how people like to make in the media and a, and a lot of hollywood is like this too they want to make the points how oh we're a part of this and we're a part of this culture that can do bad things but oh our culture causes this but yeah we have no problem going to make a movie about it or a television show or a video game about it but yeah we're gonna bitch about it months down the line and, and my thing is like Yes, these things have, because it was, it, funnily enough, it was a uh, special feature on the Enforcer, Grey Fox, and they were talking about violence in movies and things like that, too, where they're saying how, you know, yes, movies can be violent, yes, they can influence people, but it's not usually the final say. Why, just because somebody sees something bad does not mean they're going to always go out and enact that. We have, I mean, yes, it has been a thing throughout our years where people have gone and done that stuff, and that is messed up. But not everybody's like that. Not everybody has been that influence where it's like, like for you, oh, I like watching football, so me, Gray Fox, I'm going to go and tackle Owen to Boku, and, you know, for no reason at all, just tackle him. I like wrestling, so I'm going to go over to Gray Fox and low blow you in the nuts because <laughs> oh hey, because they do it wrestling all the time. It must be okay. It's censor. It's censorship at its at its at its purest. Liberals in the past used to be so anti-censorship. They used to be against it uh, because a lot of times Republicans in the past were, and they still, some still do today, were trying to take things down that they deemed inappropriate, especially if it made fun of God and Jesus and things of that nature, if you were, you know, an uber Republican. Nowadays, liberals want to silence conservative speakers for basically speaking their facts into or in even their own opinions in terms of things that are going on in the world because they want to deem it as quote unquote hate speech. Well, the bad here's the thing regardless of whether you believe that hate speech exists or not, it's still protected under the First Amendment to avoid government interference and the, and the like. But these companies with the loophole of the fact that companies aren't the government and whatnot, yeah, of course, companies can put it on whatever they want or not onto their own platform. But then you have to ask the question, does that make it right? Does that deem it worthy? Does Is that the right thing to do? Are you being fair? Now, Salon recently came out with an article stating, uh, after a major study, there is no liberal bias, but there's problems. It's like, no, there's... There's liberal bias. I mean, there's biases from both sides. If you go to both news networks, yeah. you can clearly see the bias there. If you go to Fox, between Fox and Fox News and CNN, oh yeah, you'll see the major difference in the bias. But notice how a majority of the people who are basically being censored are anybody that are to the right of the progressive compass. Even classical liberals are getting censored, like Tim Pohl, for example, He's getting like he's been demonetized a few times. I mean, conservatives though get demonetized the most, and it's true. And the reason being is because a lot of these idiot CEOs believe that what they say is hate speech. When the reality of it is, is that if you go out there, if you go out there, like for example, when you see these protesters, and I kid you not, you can watch any video on people doing interviews for this. If you go out and you see like these conservative speakers coming to campus, for example, they'll protest and be in a protest and they'll basically talk about um, 
or, you know, they'll be against whoever the conservative speaker is. Ben Shapiro or Stephen Crowder or um, what's his name? That Nick Fuentes guy, you know. I mean, who? no matter who it is, you know, what the bottom line is, what, what it comes to is, they'll be out there and they'll be talking crap. But then here's the funny part about it. Some interviewers will be like, oh, I've never seen any of this stuff. He's just, I just heard this thing. So you sit there and you're like, so you're protesting based off of what you've heard and what you feel rather than taking the time yourself to go into it and research it or watch it and make your own decision. If you still don't like it, that's fine. If you watch something and you still don't like it, that's fine. You at least took the time and to at least formulate why you don't like it. And even at that point, if you're still saying, oh, he's a racist or sexist or xenophobe or homophobe or Islamophobe or whatever the phobes or isms are these days, even if you're still saying that, give yourself a pat on the back because you at least still did it yourself to go in and at least give it a shot and take a look at it and whatnot rather than basing things on a broad assumption. And then the other part, the other part I really like is... You have these adults, and I, I use the term adults loosely when I say this, you have these adults coming up to these other adults, basically telling them not to talk to these people. They're like, oh, okay. They're such fucking indoctrinated zombies. They follow, you know, they say that it's so funny how people, how the left calls, calls the right sheep when there is just as much as sheep. It, it's just so funny to hear that. Oh, you, know, you guys are such sheeple. You're one to talk. You have pe your entire group has people coming over trying to pull people away from talking to people who are suspected all right people and whatnot, not to talk with them. Because, oh, it's because we don't want them to be a spectacle or anything. So you're admitting by saying that, by saying that, you're admitting that what your radical view views make you a spectacle. <laughs> Oh, you're gonna get laughed at. Well, it's what you're saying. If, if you don't want to get laughed at, don't be an idiot. Don't say outrageous things, and you're not gonna get laughed at. But these are also the same people that will laugh at people for their religious choices. That will laugh at people who are blindly in servitude to Trump. And there's, I mean, there's Republicans out there that worship Trump and think he's the best president. He's not the best president, but there's people out there on the side of the right that do that. And you guys, and these are probably the same people that are going to laugh out of that. So it's just this circle of hypocrisy. I mean, we all have hypocrisy within ourselves. We have to limit as much as we can. Just like we have prejudice within ourselves, like I've said before. I mean... We're not perfect. We're going to see things strongly and adamantly in certain ways. You've got to believe in something. Ultimately, though, is what you're believing in the right thing to follow is what you have to ask yourself at the end of the day. And, I mean, a lot of the beliefs I have, there's counter-arguments to them. I mean, there's no doubt about that. But And it's the same thing with Boku. It's the same thing with everybody. There's counter-arguments to it. But to have somebody, to have somebody come out there and pull you away from an interview thinking that they're doing good to you when they're just making you even look like more of a, of a fucking outrageous fanatic. It's, it's childish, immature, and pathetic. A few people have called out these people like, I'm going to have a talk with them. I would do it. I mean, hell, if I don't, even if I don't agree with them, it's just like, we're just having a talk. You know, I don't need you to pull me away. But the left, the left usually does it more. One more thing and I'll let you talk, Boku, sorry. The bottom line though is that I love it's just the it's just the whole thing of this immaturity that I've and I've mentioned it before, I think, on a recording. The left has this extreme immaturity to them. This coddled this coddled, entitled immaturity to them that elicits these just outrageous responses that are strictly emotional, this rage. The, the people on the right don't want to, you know, embellish upon it or become them. You know, it's like, oh, we're better than that and everything. In terms of spreading, in terms of spreading propaganda, which I'm going to get to, by the way, that's one thing that I hate that the right does. But, and the left does it, they're equally guilty. But... In terms of either cracking a joke or having a civil discussion and just trying to pull something away from them because you feel like they're going to make a spectacle of themselves, 
it just it's just the same thing as basically oh if you get rid of the illegal immigrants here you know the mexicans aren't going to be do, doing your landscape work and everything so you're indirectly and like i said before you're indirectly admitting that all illegal immigrants are good for is manual labor then they can't aspire to do anything else i mean that's that's ultimately kind of what you're getting at with that so boku what were you going to say there uh, i don't know no sorry about that no it's all right one propaganda bit I was going to say that I recently saw that made me laugh. Ilian Omar, one of the representatives from Minnesota, the one that had the, um, you know, that married her brother and everything of that nature. Somebody had a picture that claims that it was her, uh, basically with a with um, with some Syrian uh, with some Syrian warlords loading up a rifle. I had to laugh at it because it was a picture that was taken. In, in the 70s, and Ilian Omar was born in the early 80s. But yet, there's a lot of right-wingers out there that are spreading this picture around stating that that's Ilian Omar. And I'm sitting there like, that's that's not her. It's like, dude, she's a, she's a traitor to the country, but don't be a fucking idiot and spread false lies about somebody like that. That's what the left does. They, they use those terms. I mean, the, there's people who are so far right that they will use far left tactics that are so immature to stain somebody. If you, you, you how you stain somebody is through the facts, through the whole cold hard facts. If you did it, you did it. Not through allegations and not through hearsay, which usually the left really depends upon a lot, and the right sometimes do as well. But cold hard facts, and when it's done and everything, then you get a laugh out of it. That's that's what it is. So if you ever see a photo that looks like an Ellen Omar look like, it's not her. And if anybody tries to say, oh, this is what the government doesn't want you to see, it's bullshit. And I'm sure there's probably conspiracy theorists out there that say, oh, it really is her and stuff. But, I mean, she, was, she wasn't born until the early 80s, you know. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's like she wasn't alive in the 70s and they're trying to pass this on as something, you know, that uh, that was her. And I just, I, I, I found it on Facebook and I got a big laugh out of was it. Was her mother's, grandmother's, distant cousin's relatives, twice removed nephew's niece? Yeah, if it turned out, yeah, nice, nice reference there. If it, tur if it turned out to be a relative, uh, you know, one of her ancestors or something, I'll get a hoot out of that, but I highly doubt it. So, rather, here's what we're going to do. Since there's so many videos out there already about Soleimani and everything like that, and about what happened, and about everybody's fear mongering with World War Three and all that stuff, big time. Yeah, well, Every, at least we should say the media is war mongering. Okay. Well, not only the media, but also the general population too, cowarding around. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I've not seen too much of that, so I yeah, you have. I have. We ta I talked about it with you. Oh yeah, yeah. and we're gonna get to that. So, every time a conflict arises, it's World War III. Vietnam, Falkland Islands, Gulf War, Bosnia, Iraq again, the Georgian conflict with Russia, the Ukrainian conflict with Russia, Iran, and I'll even step back a bit, uh, you know, Russia calling us weak, preparing for World War III, things like that. Putin was preparing for World War III because he was thinking Hillary Clinton might have been in office. And I really think Hillary Clinton would have gone for the throat with Russia. You know, oh, it's a Russian bot talking and whatnot. It's incredible how many people... I don't even care if this is joking or not, but probably the two biggest in general posts that I've been seeing that have a common thread are this. There's a lot of thoughts and feminists and gender-confused bitches out there that have been tweeting, I don't care if they're joking or not, but they've been tweeting basically that they will become homemakers and give up on feminism and stuff to avoid getting drafted into the war. And I got a big laugh out of that because I mean I'm sure like there's been a lot, there's a lot of World War Three memes out there and Soleimani memes that are hilarious. I'll give you that they're they're fucking hilarious. But but yeah, I don't know these days it's hard to tell if people are joking or not in a lot of cases like this. 
if they are see if they were dead serious about this, there's no fucking way a traditional dude is going to take a thought like that or some crazy ass feminist, especially if they're just going to be used, you know, basically to avoid to draft dodge. So you see, it's okay to draft dodge when it comes to things like this, but it's not okay for Trump to quote-unquote draft dodge, as he's been called out upon. Draft dodging only works when your best interests are in mind. It seems to be the play, I mean, I'm even guilty of it too. Basically, it seems to be the play to call out people for their inaccuracies when it suits your narrative the best. But the, th the difference is when there's cold hard facts that you can use to pump behind it, there you go. But you know, it's like, one, we're not going to get, nobody's going to get drafted, and two, a country's so fucking fat that it's going to be very difficult to find able-bodied people, or strong enough people, because men are basically being emasculated, and more than likely for some, you know, I'll be, I'll be conspiracy here for some deep state ideal, for all I know. It's possible. I'm not, I used to think this was bullshit. I'm starting to, like, really, really see a lot of this. The other thing that I'm noticing is that Google is getting an overload of searches for draft, how to dodge the draft, which I think is hilarious. These are the same fucking little thin faggot kids that are going around basically stating, oh, we're going to bash the fashion, you know, we're going to stand up to tyranny and Nazism and blah, blah, but they're trying to dodge the draft. These, the, the fascists, the people that they think are fascists are usually commonly gun owners. So they can stand up to gun owners and feel like, oh, you're not going to do shit, want to bet? Seen a video of a, kid, a, a man in Chicago getting assaulted by some black kids, and then they ran away because he pulled a gun on them because they were causing harm to them, you know? Don't think, don't think, I mean, it's like, I'm a responsible gun owner, but you, if you harass me or threaten me to boiling point... And it warrants it. And I'm not, I mean, it has to warrant it. That's that's where I draw the line. If it warrants me to have to defend myself with a gun, I'll do it. You know, don't don't push people around like that. They just, they, they, they feel that, oh, we're not going to do shit. Yeah, we have a certain, you know, some right-wingers have certain, you know, levels of uh, courtesy that they extend. But if you push them or heckle them or even harm them well enough, you never know. You really never know what's going to happen. And then watch, somebody's going to find somebody like, Oh, Gray Fox is threatening violence. No, I'm not. I'm just speaking common sense. I don't want anything like that to happen. But, you know, you push somebody long enough and you never know. But I find it ironic. These are the same people that are going to be like, Bash the fish! And they want to dra dodge the draft here. They go, Oh, it's fine. You know, they don't want to you know, fight in a worthy war, blah, blah. Well, I mean, you know, this is, this is Iran we're talking about. I mean, what if they do a cyber attack? What if they what if they launch a nuclear warhead on our soil or something like that? You know, if you're able-bodied, you're not going to do anything about it? I mean, you see what I'm getting at? It's just these little hypocrisies that have these convenient excuses behind them, basically. Well, I didn't know uh, the fact that, um, you know, nothing has really happened as of yet. And it already sounds like everybody's wanting to relive the days of... Uh, Vietnam and the whole war on communism all over again. Yay! Where where's Jane Fonda? <laughs> oh, there she is. She's behind the bushes. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's kind of funny. Um, it's also really funny when you take a look at uh, when you take a look at. Uh, just, just a lot of a lot of what people say. You know, they talk a big game, but they never do it. You know, they never do it. The bottom line is that I hope I never have to do certain things that I talk a big game about. But if you know, if somebody's going to break in my home and they're armed or something like that, I'm going to shoot them. You know, I've, I've mentioned that before. I just hope it never comes to that. I had an interesting uh, conversation today. This was something I was telling you over the phone. Before we get to the tweet reading, I had an interesting conversation today with a client where basically we um, we got somehow got into the talk about the Second Amendment and they were stating like, oh, there was nothing but muskets around the time. And I said, well, the Second Amendment wasn't ratified until the late 1700s. It didn't come about in the, in the initial Constitution in 1776. 
So I further embellished upon, you ever heard of the Girondoni rifle or Flintlock rifles? And I told him there were a lot of weapons that are in existence, but the Second Amendment came about basically to limit government restrictions. That's what it came out to be. The right to bear arms is not necessarily all that the Second Amendment's about. It's basically to restrict the government from impeding upon your rights with that. And it doesn't matter what the weapons are of the time. It, you can say the, easily say the same thing about the First Amendment. The forefathers didn't know that the First Amendment was going to evolve to social media. Oh, but that's, uh, but that's not dangerous like a gun. Well, there's people out there that are stating that words are weaponized violence. I'm looking at you, proto-magical proto girl. Game's done quick is starting. So you see, these weren't written with the current technology in mind. This was written as basically a blueprint for the future, practically. I could easily say alcohol has, not rubbing alcohol, but drinking alcohol, has no purpose whatsoever except to get you fat and to get you in trouble. If you abuse it, of course. Mm -hmm. But we don't blame the beer if a DUI occurs. We don't blame the beer if sexual abuse or rape occurs. We blame the person. However, when a gun is shot and it kills somebody, we blame the gun, not the person. It's very, very ironic. Because if you could easily say guns have no purpose, then I'll easily say alcohol has no purpose. I love drinking alcohol. I know it's got a dark side to it, but I'm not going out there picketing for it. I'm not going to go out there and ask for demand prohibition. Drink responsibly. Not everybody's going to do that. And unfortunately, bad things are going to happen. But I'm not going to go out there and just demand that something be taken away just because of bad apples. And the same can be said about bad apples and guns. And it's sad. Oh, but the grander scale things, fuck the grander scale things. Lives are still, because of alcohol, being under the influence of alcohol, lives are still in danger, especially if you operate a vehicle. You're still, it doesn't matter how many lives you put in danger, you're putting lives in danger. That's the bottom line. So, if you, ever, if you want to get rid of guns, then we need to get rid of alcohol too, because they're both dangerous things. We'll need to get rid of a lot of things yeah. if we do that. I mean, it's uh, shit. Let's get rid of vehicles. It's a domino effect, yeah. Yeah. It's just like get that. Get test. rid of vehicles. Get rid of sticks. Get rid of knives. Uh, get rid of base. Basically, become the UK. Yeah. <laughs> can't have we can't have our fists, so we might as well get rid of our hands. You know. <laughs> oh look, our. But they have practical uses, Boku, but they're still our dangerous. Our feet can be weapons, Bray Fox. I guess we don't need our feet. You know, like like. Oh, oh look. These things that I have in my home can be blood instruments. There we go. Can't have all this no more, can we? It's, it's you know, uh, all it is is just pure ignorance. That's, that's what it comes down to. But, you know, it, it was fun because at the end of the conversation, he kind of started agreeing. The key thing I told him was criminals don't follow laws. We've had, we've had gun control ever since 1938. And we still have crime and violence today. It doesn't matter how many laws you put into effect. Criminals don't obey laws. And he's like, oh, you're right. I'm like, there you go. You know? And I was just like, it, I sat there and it's just like, I mean, hey, don't own a gun. It's okay. I'm not going to think you're a pussy. I'll joke about it, but I'm not going to really think you're a pussy if you don't own a gun. I don't I don't think stuff like that. Like, like I, don't, I don't have one, huh. so... I mean, if you don't own a gun, you don't own a gun. If you want to protect yourself a different way, protect yourself a different way. It's your right. I don't care. But stop trying to take away something from responsible people. Well, well, well the one thing is, you've said the key word there, Gray Fox, responsible people. And the, thing, and the thing is, it's like how you put it <coughs> to this gentleman, you know, right now. It's like, um, even if we had laws to put into effect, where pe if people listened to the laws and didn't do it, and also if we had people and law enforcement to enforce the laws like like big time if we really stepped up the enforcement to do it i always believed and, and this is the this is the imagination of the bad mind or of the criminal in many ways unless they develop a conscience in the next 5.2 seconds or so <laughs> but the thing is whatever you take away it's just like with the computer hacker they will find any way to get what they need again because that's their thing to challenge the system to basically break down the law enforcement or to do whatever deeds they want they will find whatever they can no matter what they can or how they can to commit the deed because that's the way they think 
Yeah. Just like how a hacker's like, people are like, well, oh, we need to get something to get rid of the hackers. And I've always thought, you know, it's cool that we have the security things in place, but the thing is they constantly need to be updated because yep. what does a hacker do? The minute a new thing comes out, their thing is to break it. That's what criminals exactly. do. Exactly. Oh, so we can't... It's a challenge to them. Well, I mean, and exactly. And Well, the best thing that you said, like with the gun thing, is look what happened. You mentioned Prohibition or your group Fox. What did, what did the criminals do? Oh, well, uh, alcohol can't be sold properly, so the crime organizations and mafia, for most part, is going to get a hold of it, and they're going to, you know, run it and do what they can. Hell, that's how moonshining started in the Deep South. That's how they got through Prohibition, too. You had people illegally making it in the mountains. You will have folks Speakies find a and... way to do what they can yep. to get something, no matter what. Speakeasies, and even the police. There's corrupt police officers that were on the take, too. Oh.